everyone, this is Intro Stats with Matt Show, and today we're going to look at how to calculate one population mean confidence intervals. So we're still kind of working on how these confidence intervals get calculated. Today we're looking at the mean average, which is the most common average out there. So if you're trying to figure out the mean average of a population, what do you do? Okay, so we're going to be looking at that today. So remember a couple big definitions, of course, that we kind of have, have already gone over a little bit. Confidence interval, right? Two numbers we think the population parameter is in between, right? But we know that our sample will be off from the population. We say it will be off by the margin of error, right? How far off we think the sample statistic could be from the population parameter. So. But let's get into how the margin of error is actually calculated and how we actually calculate the confidence interval. So we said the general formula for calculating one population confidence intervals was the sample statistic plus or minus the margin of error. Uh, that works for mean averages and for, for proportions. Um, so for a lot of time, uh, we had, we'd seen that this was the formula that people used. Uh, sample statistic plus or minus the z-score times the standard error. Um, again, uh, z-score is going to tell you how many standard errors I need to be away for a 95 or 90 or 99 percent confidence. Now, the key with this is that um, we kind of discovered a while back that z-scores weren't super accurate for smaller data sets when you're calculating a confidence interval for the one population mean. Um, a uh, very famous person, a uh, statistician named uh, William Gossett came along and, and he actually invented something called t-scores, which have a little bit better accuracy, especially when data sets get small. So in general, the t-scores and z-scores are almost the same thing when data sets are big, but when data sets are small, we have a small sample size, the t's become more accurate. They get bigger than the z-score to kind of account for that idea of um, more, uh, less data, more error, right? This is going to make the margin of error bigger. So we're going to use the critical value t-score for means, z-scores are usually for proportion. All right. Now, Let's take a look at, a, at the formula. So again, before computers were invented, statisticians had to kind of come up with a way of estimating standard error. So the formula they came up with, it actually works really well, uh, is S over the square root of N. So standard deviation of the one data set divided by the square root of N, where N is the how many numbers are in your data set, the sample size. Uh, surprisingly, this, this formula actually is used in a lot of computer programs to this day to estimate standard error. Remember, standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. All right? So these are all kind of topics we've already covered. We're just kind of looking at the, the calculation now. So t times the standard error is going to give me the margin of error. Right? And then I'm going to start with my sample mean. Since I'm trying to estimate a population mean, you start with the sample mean, and then you add and subtract the margin of error. So let's look at an example. Right? Uh, I got uh, some random sample data, body temperature data of 50 adults, and uh, I got this data off of StatKey, and we had a sample mean of 98.26 degrees Fahrenheit, and a sample standard deviation of 0.765 degrees Fahrenheit, and um, our sample size was 50. Now, when we, uh, if you looked at the, watch the video on how to calculate critical values, critical z-scores or critical t-scores, um, t-scores need a degrees of freedom to calculate them. So, for one sample uh, or one uh, one population confidence intervals, we would want to do a degrees of freedom of n minus one. So, since there was 50 people in the data set, there's going to be a degrees of freedom of 49. So I went ahead and went, went, went into StatKey, just like I showed you in the, in the critical value video, and I put in degrees of freedom 49, and I clicked on uh, two-tail, and then I put in 95% in the middle. And this is what we got. T, the T-score, the critical value T-score, were plus or minus 2.010. Uh, again, in the old days, we used to look those up on charts, or um, but again, we're in the modern age, you should probably be, you should, you should definitely be using technology and not using the charts so much. So here's the, um, 
Here's the uh, uh, critical value t-score for the situation. All right, now it's just a matter of plugging the numbers in and doing a little, uh, little calculation here. So our sample mean was 98.26. Our t-score was 2.010. Yes, I know the critical value t-score says plus or minus 2.010, but the plus or minus is right there. It's going to be taken care of. Um, and then here's our standard deviation, 0.765 divided by the square root of 50. Now if you actually calculate this part of it, divide these two, get 0 0.0182. That's actually the standard error. So 0 0.0182 is our standard error. I always like to write that down somewhere so that I have that. So looks like our standard error was 0 0.1082 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so about 0 0.108 degrees Fahrenheit was my standard error. Now I've got to multiply that by the critical value, the t-score. So when I multiply 0 0.1082 times the critical value t-score, I get 0.2175, and that's going to be my, my margin of error. Remember, standard error and margin of error are not the same thing. The margin of error is usually uh, almost twice as big as the standard error. So again, it'll be... Um, really calculated by multiplying the critical value times the standard error. But the margin of error estimate for this one is about 0.2175. And again, this is all degrees Fahrenheit. This is all quantitative data. We're not dealing with percentages here. So the margin of error was 0 0.2175. If I round it, I could do 218 degrees Fahrenheit about. So there's our margin of error. Now obviously when I'm calculating stuff, you can see that I am rounding quite a bit. Uh, when you calculate something by hand, you usually round. Uh, the computers do this much more efficiently and they always carry more decimal places. So usually if you're calculating by hand and it comes off just a hair off from what the computer said, go with the computer. <laughs> the computer is going to carry a lot more decimal places and be a little more accurate and have less rounding error. So now I'm just going to add and subtract, right? Once you get to the end, once you have your sample statistic and your margin of error, you just have to add and subtract them. So 98.26 minus 0.2175, I'm going to round it, comes out to about 98.04 degrees Fahrenheit. 98.26 plus 0.2175, we get 98.48 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. So we are 95% confident that the population mean average body temperature is somewhere between 98.04 degrees Fahrenheit and 98.48 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, remember, two numbers we think the population is in between. Interesting thing, again, is that the sample mean was actually 98.26. Remember, that does not tell you that this, the population mean is exactly 98.26. It tells you the population mean could be anywhere between these two numbers. All right, that's the whole idea of the confidence interval. Now, again, like anything, the computer is going to calculate this. Uh, when you go to a traditional computer program and click one population mean confidence interval, it's going to calculate this stuff for you. The, the key is knowing kind of the idea, right? It's the critical value times the standard error gives you the margin of error. And then it's taking the sample statistic and adding and subtracting the margin of error is how you get the confidence interval. But also, when would this be accurate, right? When would this be accurate is a very important question. Probably is the question in all of science when you're talking about formulas. You want to know when formulas are accurate and when are they not accurate. I think we don't spend enough time in science actually talking about that. This formula is only going to be accurate if, it come, if we're talking about a situation where we're likely to have a, a normal sampling distribution. Remember, t-scores are a normal distribution, right? They're normal, they're bell-shaped. Um, standard error, the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. Standard deviation is only accurate if it's bell-shaped, right? Normal. A lot of this formula stems from it being normal, the sampling distribution not lining up with a normal distribution. And that's not always the case. Not all sampling distributions are normal. So if we go over here, we can see the assumptions that are required for this formula to work. We want a random sample. Uh, this one was a random sample, I think. I'm going to assume it was a random sample. And then individuals independent, probably this passes that because we have a small random sample of 50 from a lot of people. So chances are that we're not going to have people that are related to each other. 
And then um, we need the sample size of at least 30 or normal. Remember, that came from the central limit theorem. That was one of our, our, our talks during the central limit theorem of when the sampling distribution would actually look normal and when would it not look normal. Now, if you notice, this data actually was above 30. It was 50. I actually did look at a dot plot, and it was not too far off from normal. So actually, we're good. If it passed either of these, it's considered passing. So you could have a normal data that was below 30, it would pass, or a skewed data that's above 30, and it would still pass. It is an or statement. So one of these two have to be true. All right, so it looks like this one did pass the assumptions. So this is probably pretty accurate. So our population mean average body temperature is somewhere between 98.04 degrees Fahrenheit and 98.48 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, well, thanks for being with me again and, and spending some time with me, and uh, I will see you next time.